So welcome to our Abu Dhabi Masterclass, uh, which is one of the many sessions taking place on our Facebook page uh, for the TTG Digital Destinations Festival in association with WTM London. Um, so just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Sophie Griffiths. I'm editor of TTG uh, and I'm joined here by Jane Dawkins, Country Manager UK and Ireland for the Department of Culture and Tourism Abu Dhabi. Hi Jane. Hello there, hi. And Aspen Parker, uh, Aspen Barker, Trade Executive, UK and Ireland, Department of Culture and Tourism, Abu Dhabi. Hi, Aspen. Hi, nice to be here. <laughs> so just to run through uh, what we're going to be talking about this afternoon, we're going to be looking at Abu Dhabi's specialist destination e-learning. Uh, we're going to examine how to sell the Emirates heritage and culture scene, and we're going to be looking at the essential information and selling tips for agents. Um, and I would just encourage uh, all agents watching to do ask questions, do engage with us uh, on Facebook, just use the comment section um, and I'll pose as many questions as I can to Jane and Aspen. Okay, so just to kick us off, Jane, um, you've launched the Abu Dhabi Specialist uh, Training Programme, which is a fantastic resource for agents uh, looking to improve their knowledge about Abu Dhabi during the pandemic. Can you just talk us through those modules? Yes, well, we, we did. We, talk, we launched in the UK and globally, and the URL is abudhabispecialist.com. And if I can just uh, share my screen here, we um, have some great modules to, uh, for agents to work through. Um, and um, uh, we've got five uh, modules um, as, as part of the training. Um, once you've done all the five modules, you get your Abu Dhabi specialist certificate. Uh, they go through how to sell Abu Dhabi, how to best position it, Abu Dhabi city and the surrounding islands of Sadiat Island and Yas Island, everything to do and see in the city. And then onto the attractions of the wider Emirate out to the desert and to the second city of Alain. And then giving you more reasons to visit and some of those special interest areas. And then a great section with uh, sample itineraries to be able to package for your customers. Um, once you've completed the training, there's no reason why you can't revisit the home homepage of abudabispecialist.com. We've got lots of resources there to help you, um, including a great interactive map of Abu Dhabi and the surrounding areas. You can see all of the attractions there. Uh, we have uh, new sections, everything that's new and, and up and coming in the city and also an Asian toolkit, uh, which has videos and images, uh, which you can use with your own marketing to your own customer base. We've got further learning as well, which links to some of the partners that we work with to their e-learning. And then uh, last but not least, once you've done the uh, become an Abu Dhabi specialist, you uh, go on to the ad, uh, Asian rewards section and our top prize is a five night, five star holiday to Abu Dhabi, including flights with Etihad Airways and an attractions package. And that's to be taken in 2021. And along the way, we've got a hundred love to shop gift vouchers for you to win um, to keep you going towards your registering and graduating. Uh, the top prize will be drawn in the middle of October. Uh, yeah, so um, we would be great if you could have a look at abudabispecialist.com and um, have a go at that fantastic e-learning that we've had great fun putting together over the last uh, three, four, five, up to six months. Yeah, there's been quite a big launch. Brilliant. Thanks, Jane. Um, now, lots of tourist boards are promoting virtual tours right now. Uh, are there any resources like this for Abu Dhabi at all? Uh, yes, we have um, just launched a consumer campaign called Stay Curious, hashtag Stay Curious, hashtag Stay Home, Stay Safe, Stay Curious. And it's all about, OK, we can't travel um, physically right now, but your mind uh, can travel. Um, we have different scenes within this platform. We've got the stay adventurous theme and you can you can go on various fantastic great 360 tours of the different landscapes of Abu Dhabi the city the desert the water you can stay indulgent with heightening your taste buds and test your cooking skills uh, you can stay creative and uh, interact with all the culture sections of Abu Dhabi and um, even take a virtual tour of all the great artworks in the Louvre Abu Dhabi and also stay entertained uh, with various plugging into various virtual uh, concerts and events that are going on on this on this platform. So that's at staycurious.ae, hashtag staycurious. Fantastic. Uh, are these free resources? Where, where can agents find them as well? 
Yeah, they are indeed. AbuDhabiSpecialist.com is totally, totally free. That's the URL, AbuDhabiSpecialist.com. And don't forget that you can uh, win uh, shopping vouchers along the way as part of your journey to becoming an Abu Dhabi specialist. And also somebody's going to win that top prize of the five night, five star holiday to Abu Dhabi. Fantastic. Um, moving on to the heritage and cultural side. Um, Aspen, you mentioned that there are virtual tours um, are a fantastic way of obviously experiencing Abu Dhabi's heritage and cultural scene. Um, can you talk a little bit about the attractions or activities that you would recommend to agents uh, wanting to build these into an, an itinerary for a client who's particularly interested in the heritage and, and cultural side of the Emirates? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the biggest must see that we associate with Abu Dhabi and we always recommend people to go visit, even if they're just on really short stopover, is the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque. It's actually ranked third in TripAdvisor's list of the top landmarks in the entire world. It is this brilliant white marble building able to accommodate 40,000 worshippers. They actually have the descendants of the artisans that built the Taj Mahal come and work on this building. So you can imagine just how spectacular it really is. Um, every time I go back to Abu Dhabi, I absolutely make sure that I put that on my itinerary, even though I've, I've already been there before. Wow. Um, it's free to enter, free guided tours as well, and they even offer free abayas to wear um, if visitors aren't wearing the right attire, just because as it is a place of worship, there's a dress code, as you can imagine, same as if you would go to the Vatican or something like that. Um, they make it really, really seamless and yeah, offer robes for you to put on as well. Ah, okay. um, just moving in, in the city center itself as well, there's a little sort of trio of palaces that make for a really great afternoon out. Um, they're all right, like I said, city center, just right here, close to Emirates Palace. Uh, agents might be aware of, it's one of the more famous hotels in Abu Dhabi, sort of the flagship. It was the most expensive hotel in the world when it was originally built. Um, so now if you want to go stay and really feel royal, you can do that, or you can even just visit and um, try one of their signature gold cappuccinos, a cappuccino with real gold flakes in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, and then right next door, you can go visit the actual palaces of Abu Dhabi. So the first one is Qasr al Hassan. It means the White Fort, it's the oldest building in all of Abu Dhabi. Um, beautifully restored, uh, this old, old stone building, and it's set against this backdrop of all these modern skyscrapers. So it's really surreal, and it's a great place to learn about the history of Abu Dhabi. Um, it's where the ruling family originally lived, and there's a great exhibition showing about how the city has really grown from this very small fishing village to the metropolis that it is today in really only about a hundred years. Um, and they have a house of artisans where locals show uh, traditional handicrafts, uh, dances, things like that. And then right next door as well is Qasr al-Watan, which means palace of the people. And that's the current presidential palace where um, the crown prince of Abu Dhabi stays today and they have uh, dignitaries that come and visit and it's just open to the public it is beautifully opulent and they even have a light show that's projected onto the building in the evening which is really great entertainment if you're staying around the Corniche so always recommend that <laughs> and then the next big um, art and culture area in Abu Dhabi is the Sadiat Cultural District so Sadia Island is a little island sort of known for being the beach destination of Abu Dhabi but it's also they're looking to um, create this area is being the cultural epicenter of the Middle East, really. So it all started with Louvre Abu Dhabi, which opened in 2017. A lot of people aren't even aware that there is a Louvre in Abu Dhabi. Really? Yeah, but it is really sort of our crown jewel. Um, it has masterpieces from the key French institutions as well as their own collection. And it's all housed under this absolutely spectacular building. So even if people don't think that they're into art, I always tell them just visit Louvre in any ways. Um, it's really, really a great afternoon out. They even have a little rooftop patio. You can have a sundown or drink. Um, a five-star hotel by a Michelin star chef. Um, definitely a great, great afternoon. And then that whole area is really just dedicated to arts and culture. So they have um, Sorbonne University, New York University, Berkeley School of Music, all of campuses there. They have Manorat Al Sadia, which is dedicated to local art. And looking on to the future, they're going to be developing this area even more. They're going to have the Zayed National Museum opening up in a few years. That's the National Museum of all of the UAE. And then they have the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi as well. So this can be all modern art there. Yeah. And lastly, if you have a, a client that's really, really a culture vulture and they want to sink even deeper into the history and culture of Abu Dhabi, we recommend getting out from the city itself and going on to Alain, which is the heritage homeland of Abu Dhabi, where the ruling family is originally from. 
and that's where all of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites are, uh, historic forts, museums, archaeological sites, and all of this is highlighted in Module 3 of Abu Dhabi Specialists. So if you want to be able to upsell this little extra add-on, um, definitely check out the online training so that you can yeah, wrap your head around a little bit, a little, all this a little bit more. And Module 5 of Abu Dhabi Specialist is actually, like Jane said, all dedicated to itineraries. And there's an itinerary specifically tailored to culture vultures. So you can kind of have that in your back pocket and uh, keep it as a little resource <laughs> you give to those clients. Brilliant. And so for those culture vultures out there, um, what would, advice would you say to agents to, to kind of really show that Abu Dhabi is different to um, other Emirates? You know, what, what makes Abu Dhabi so unique? Well, I think that one of Abu Dhabi's unique selling points really is its authenticity, and it's something that they really like to promote. It is the capital city of the UAE, which a lot of people aren't even aware of. Like I said, they're going to have the National Museum there. Um, so they make it a point of difference. Uh, they have these excellent cultural and heritage offerings. And I really, really recommend, even if you're going to Abu Dhabi on a beach holiday, take that afternoon and delve a little bit into the history and the culture of uh, the destination because it is a really, really unique and absolutely interesting place to look into. Yeah, and a lot to see. <laughs> yeah. a lot to <laughs> Try to pack it all in here, yeah. <laughs> Um, so looking at the, the essential information and the selling tips um, side of things. So apart from the kind of cultural side of things, and there is a lot, um, as we said, to pack in there, um, yeah. what types of holidays uh, can be had in Abu Dhabi and what type of clients should, should Abu Dhabi really be recommended to? Well, our number one um, holiday type really in Abu Dhabi is beach. We have miles of beautiful and beaches that are lapped by the turquoise waters of the Arabian Gulf. I so wish I was there right now. And it's just fabulous for beach and sun worshippers with the year round uh, climate. So that's, the, the, that's beach. Then uh, coming on to family holidays, along these beaches, we've got some fantastic beach properties with excellent kids clubs. We have theme parks and even kids culture, uh, an emphasis on that, particularly at the Louvre Abu Dhabi, there's a really cool children's museum there. And then um, a, a, a smaller area for Abu Dhabi, but the active adventurer, um, you can get out to the desert and you can even add on a, be uh, a stay in the desert from a beach holiday. All these different types of holidays are matching with clients. That's all covered in module one of our e-learning. Brilliant. And what types of activities would you recommend that agents could build in uh, to itineraries for, for each of these categories for their clients? Well, there's so much, but I mean, just just a few for the beach. So our star beach is Sadiat Beach. Sadiat actually means happiness in Arabic. So you're very happy when you see the nine yeah. kilometers of white sand beach there. There are five uh, beautiful hotels along Sadiat Beach. Um, and we also got Sadiat, Sadiat Beach Club, a very plush beach club there. But there's also a public beach on Sadiat. There aren't any motorized sports allowed along Sadiat because of the turtles that visit the area. They're hawksbill turtles, endangered, and they come and lay their eggs on the beach. But you can do stand up paddle boarding along that um, Sadiat stretch of beach. You might want to visit Yas Island where you can go to Yas Beach. This is another beach club uh, which has an infinity swimming pool. Uh, it's in a beach club style and even has licensed cafes and bars. Uh, and you can rent water sports equipment, including catamarans, jet skis and kayaks at Yas Beach. So a real, real great vibe on at Yas Beach Club. And then moving into the, back to the city centre along the Corniche, you've got the public beach there, which has got a great boardwalk for walkers and cyclists and also the Corniche Beach Hotels there along the front, which each of them has their private uh, beach club. Uh, coming on to family holidays, well, we've mentioned the beach hotels along Sadia and the Corniche and on Yaz, most with excellent kids clubs. Um, you uh, have theme park heaven on Yas Island. So we've got Warner Brothers World, you, which is perfect for young kids. We've got Ferrari World Abu Dhabi, which is good for young kids and older kids alike, and, uh, and the adults that are still, still young at heart. Uh, yes, Water World are amazing water theme park. And the newest one to the collection is called Climb, which has the world's highest climbing wall and skydiving tunnel. And I haven't been in there yet. So when I eventually get back out to Abu Dhabi, that's one of the first places I'm going to try and get to. Um, in the summer months for family holidays as well, many of the shopping malls have kids entertainments and live shows, which really means that you can go for a nice afternoon of air conditioning into one of the shopping malls and enjoy, and enjoy some entertainment. 
And then for the active adventurers, well, then you want to send them out to the desert, the beauty of the Aldafra Desert, which is south of, the, of Abu Dhabi City. Uh, you can experience it either on an evening desert safari excursion or go one, one further and stay overnight for two, one, two, three nights in a luxury desert hotel or go glamping in a desert camp. And you can try four by four dune bashing, sandboarding, archery, falconry, or go with a walking guide and learn about the desert's flora and fauna. And back on the coast, you've got uh, a great way to explore the beautiful mangroves along the coast by kayak, which I have done and is, is just amazing. You can't believe that you're in a big city when you're doing that. So literally something for everyone then. <laughs> Absolutely. It really is so diverse and incredible destination. Yeah. So what about budgets then? So is Abu Dhabi a luxury destination or is there something for those um, that might be on a smaller budget as well? Yeah, so Abu Dhabi definitely has this reputation for being a totally luxury destination. And it does have those five star hotels, uh, the most expensive hotel in the world, as I mentioned, but it's also affordable luxury and room rates are about the same or even less than the neighboring Emirates. So you really can um, make it work for a lot of different budgets. And value for money is really something that um, is, is really good to promote. The, it's an incredibly high standard of restaurants, hotels, one of a kind attractions that you really can't get anywhere else. So you really do get what you pay for in Abu Dhabi and it's a one of a kind destination in that sense. And then for people that are a little bit more budget conscious, you can absolutely always promote um, summer rates. So summer is the low season and you can get some really, really great deals. And plus always be on the lookout for things like value added deals, like room upgrades, kids stay free, theme park add-ons, because um, they're really, really frequent and especially during those summer months. And when you say summer months, would that be May to October or May to September or? Yeah, so summer, um, well, shoulder season, we usually say is sort of autumn and spring. So summer months is the same for our UK summer months. Okay. So. I mean, Abu Dhabi, it's one of the biggest selling points. It has year-round sunshine, yeah. so it is kind of a year-round destination. High season is December through March, and that's when we get all of the great winter sun, which Brits are always looking out for. <laughs> um, and then summer conveniently uh, coincides with school holidays, so it's a great economical time to go. Um, if you have clients that are maybe a little bit scared, they think it might be too hot during the summer, mm -hmm. uh, you can always let them know that Abu Dhabi is really, really well equipped to deal with heat. They have air conditioning absolutely everywhere and lots of indoor attractions, um, including theme parks like Ferrari World, Warner Brothers World are 100% indoors. So you can have an entire day out in the very middle of the summer and be absolutely comfortable the entire time. And then one last time that's often overlooked is Ramadan. So mm -hmm. the month of Ramadan, it changes every year. Um, we're actually in the midst of it right now. Mm -hmm. And it's often overlooked. People maybe think that it's not a good time to visit Abu Dhabi. Um, but in general, things are changing a lot. And while it depends a little bit on the hotel, um, for the most part now, it's sort of business as usual. And you can still have a fantastic beach holiday with a cocktail in hand um, during Ramadan in Abu Dhabi. Um, so it's another sometime, it's the best time to go really for people that are again into that culture. Yeah. Um, it can actually add to your, to your, um, holiday and it's not mm -hmm. a time to, to avoid. Yeah. It makes for a fantastic experience. I bet. We've had a, had a comment here from Julie Holland who just says, wow, so much choice, which I think pretty much sums up <laughs> everything. Um, and so how long would you recommend clients spend in Abu Dhabi? Um, there's clearly a lot to do. So what, is there kind of an average time that you'd recommend us to? Yeah, I mean, we've developed as a stopover destination and that's what still a lot of people associate us with. And while it's still a great option for people traveling on to the Indian Ocean or Australia, there, like you said, there is just so much to do now that you can absolutely spend seven days there. And that tends to be about the average now that we're seeing for holidays. And this is especially true if you're going to go on and explore the wider Emirates. So go out to the city of Alain or stay overnight in the desert, take a trip to one of the desert islands. Um, yeah, you can really make this into a longer holiday. And given that there is so much to talk about, what would your top tips be uh, for selling travel to, to Abu Dhabi um, for agents watching today? So actually the entire bit of module one for our Abu Dhabi specialist program is devoted to these selling tips. So I definitely recommend you look onto that. Um, there's also top tips and recommendations from locals sort of sprinkled throughout the entire training course. So those are really useful to keep an eye out for. 
Um, but as a takeaway, I think just the diversity of the destination uh, means that there is a type of holiday for every client. So I think just identifying what your client is looking for, then you can sort of build an Abu Dhabi holiday to suit them. Something that will suit absolutely everybody is the year round climate. Uh, the fact it's only a seven hour flight and there's no jet lag as well. It's only a three hour time difference. So you don't have to worry about that like you would with further field destinations. Um, but one takeaway tip that I can give you that not a lot of people know about is the extraordinary Abu Dhabi pass. So if you have a flight with Etihad Airways, the boarding pass actually doubles as this extraordinary Abu Dhabi pass that gives you discounts at things like restaurants, attractions, spas, even clothing brands all throughout Abu Dhabi. So always tell your clients to hold on to their boarding pass. Oh, fantastic. That's a great tip. And um, we had a comment here from Sarah Williams. He, she says as well, um, she went to another Emirate during Ramadan and she said she had a fabulous time. So definitely do not be put off during traveling during this period. Um, Jane, is there anything else? Um, any final remarks that agents should really know about Abu Dhabi right now? Any, any final comments, top tips? Yeah, um, well, probably would be a bit amiss, remiss of me uh, not to mention COVID right now. So, but the UAE did take a very proactive approach and shut down their international borders very early in the COVID pandemic. So therefore, there has not been a huge outbreak in the UAE. And the destination is really very motivated to get their tourism up and running as soon as it's safe to do so. And at which point Abu Dhabi would be waiting to welcome visitors again with their really famous Arabian hospitality. Brilliant. Thank you so much um, to both of you. I know we've put the link um, for the training platform uh, in the, the comments section. So for any agents watching that want that, do just look in the, the comments section. Um, but a huge thank you to, to both of you, Jane and Aspen, um, for joining us here today about, uh, from for Abu Dhabi. And um, just to everybody else watching, um, do tune in to our next masterclass, um, which is going to be with Fiji at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Um, and also do check out the TTG Digital uh, Destinations Festival timetable and our previous content, which is all hosted on TTG Media dot com forward slash dest fest so thank you very much again to you jane and aspen and thank you to everyone for watching thanks for having thank us. you everyone. thanks bye, bye.